this time we're gonna switch it up and we're about to talk about the world of superbikes and it's not really a topic that uh, no. you know we've been um mentioning too much about on the channel but i think it's important with the popularity of the series growing um with um, you know some australian riders which which are a part of it and you know more and more um the series is starting to become popular I think what's really important about this particular round, it was Donington. It is uh, oh, an, yeah, cool. an iconic track for Formula One and for MotoGP, mm -hmm. but it also produces some really, really, really good racing. It just so happens this weekend that uh, top rack uh, Razioglu was just uh, on a different planet uh, um, on the BMW. And uh, you know a rider is coming into that dominant era when even the team managers or other riders are saying, you know, we're, we hope that we can fight for second because oh, first wow. place is just gone. He was, on average, eight tenths of a second faster on race pace than anybody. Each lap? Each lap. Oh, my God. So the first race, he won about over 12 seconds, which is the biggest winning margin that he's had in World Superbikes. Uh, race number two, which is a sprint race, um, he won it you know, in 10 laps. He gave them almost like five and a half seconds. And then race two of the weekend on Sunday, he was you know, super, super dominant. And it's it's fantastic. You know, in motorcycle racing, it's incredible when you see a rider and his bike just become one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, we've yeah. seen, you know, Rossi 2005 dominance, uh, Rossi in 2002 with the RCV 211, uh, 211V. I mean, this rider can do no wrong on this bike. You know, he sure. has complete control of it. Um, there is a very interesting argument happening at the moment. Ducati have lodged a complaint about the seat that uh, the BMW has currently placed on Top Rack's uh, motorcycle. Right. But we'll see where this investigation goes. But look, if Ducati want answers, it's the Top Rack factor. You know, he is making the difference. He was making the difference with Yamaha, but now he's jumped on this uh, BMW and. It's going to be hard to beat. It's going to yeah, be hard to sure. beat. You know, um, the race results in general, you know, Alex Lowe's did a um, a brilliant race in race one. You know, Nico, um, Nico Bulliga did a, a brilliant race for our race one, but then just ran out of tires and ended up finishing outside of the top three. Alex Lowe's, you know, on the Kawasaki coming in in second. Alvaro Bautista from 13th made all the way back to third, which I think was a very, very, very strong race. Sounds uh, like Marquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a um, really, really good race. You know, I feel for Bautista because, you know, this year they put the, the weight, uh, they increased the weight on his particular bike because last year he was so dominant. And I think that really has impacted the balance of the bike and how he feels on the bike. It just doesn't seem like the old Bautista. In the sprint race, uh, again, yes, Top Rack won the race, but Nico Bulliga came back and came back second. So obviously worked out the tire wear issues. And uh, Jonathan Raya on the Yamaha, which we haven't seen a lot of Jonathan since his move to Yamaha. I think everybody hoped that Top Rack, Bautista, and Jonathan would fight uh, out there at the front, yep. but it just hasn't been the case. And then in race uh, number two, Top Racker first, uh, Nico Bulga second, Alex Lowe's uh, third. Uh, there were, you know, some interesting rides uh, throughout the field. You know, Andre Iannone didn't particularly have a good, um, a good, you know, round again. You know, he's a guy who's talking about, you know, potentially I want to move back to MotoGP. I want a factory bike. I don't want to pay to ride. He's been very vocal about that. And what, I mean, what are your thoughts, Alex? You know, like when a rider says stuff like that right i want a factory bike and i don't want to pay anymore yet this weekend he was outside of the top 12 you know w what are your thoughts on that well i mean like it kind of just speaks for itself doesn't it like if your results aren't there you know i think it's more you know speaking than showing what he can actually do and we've seen him in MotoGP. gp yes so like he's not bad i don't know if it's just the world super bike that he's not you know, getting acclimatized to, but if he wants to come back into MotoGP, because he had a bit of a, didn't he have a bit of a scandal issue when he left or something? No, there was a doping uh, ban. Yeah, there you go. Well, he's got to prove himself that yeah. he's, you know, welcomed back in the paddock and, and whatnot. And there are, we'll go through the silly season later on in the show, but there are a lot of teams that haven't signed anyone. Yes. For next year. There's a good three or four that are still looking to fill up their roster. 
Yeah. And, I mean, um, um, because Carlos COVID. Sainz is taking so long, he might be moving to MotoGP. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> if he wants to be in a world championship, yeah. you know, there's um, yeah, there's a lot going on. But look, overall, World Superbikes, uh, um, it's it's a fantastic category. It's great that the the bikes that you see racing on Sunday, you know, you can go to a dealership and just buy them. Just buy it. I mean, it's not going to be exactly the same as a World Superbike spec, but it's but there thereabouts, yeah. you know, and that that is very very appealing and something that. Uh, you know, I think car racing can, you know, really look into and do more of, you know, like, you know, it, it would be nice if people could, you know, see it on Sunday and go buy it on Monday more often, you know, compared yeah, to what we're doing at the moment with the supercars, for example. Um, you know, TCR do that, but not really um, quite well. It would be nice for a new category, you know, to, to come out that has that sort of appeal. But moving on, you know, from world superbikes to Australian superbikes, yes, and the action was absolutely incredible. Two epic races. You know, we had uh, our very own Tyra. Um, Tyra Lynch uh, did phenomenal, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal job throughout the weekend, um, fighting a knee injury that happened during practice two on the Friday uh, to come away the weekend with two top tens. You know, and um, this is this is the first time that he's he's been inside the top ten. Yeah, I at, that. at Australian uh, superbike level. You know, we're talking about a rider who's constantly on the podium in supersport. Sure. Comes into superbikes, and you know, we do talk a lot. And you know, he just said, "Look, the the difference, how you um, how you ride these bikes, and just uh, everything about them is completely different to a super sport bike. Sure. And so it's going to take time that that learning curve is there. And, you know, step by step, he's getting there and the team is getting there. And it just, it's just exciting, you know, to watch a rider um, be a rookie and uh, taking it all in and making huge steps forward. Um, you know, Arthur Sisters as well from SA did, did, did two really, really good races, and we'll go over the results That's in a, a moment. Cool name. Arthur. Arthur Sisters. Well, yeah. Well, um, former Moto3 Sissus. rider, a Red Bull rookies yeah, runner up um, from SA, huge, huge talent. And the fact that we don't see him at um, international championships is a is a crime you know because he is a <laughs> phenomenal rider had the pleasure of watching him race since he was in mini bikes in south australia yeah wow um and you should, you should see him in speedway is just absolutely phenomenal how old is he um he what would he be he would be mid 25 26 right now yeah, right. So, so, oh, something somewhere along those lines i sure. apologize Arthur, if i uh, butchered uh, butchered your <laughs> yeah, age you in the spot but but in terms of the racing at the front, uh, it was absolutely spectacular. You know, Mark Jones uh, for Yamaha, he, he was second for uh, in during race number one. He was second for about half race distance, and then he pulled off this fantastic move, um, heading towards the final corners, built himself a gap, and in the end, ended up winning the race by two point three seconds. So I'll go over the results of the Morgan Park race one. Mike Jones first, a brilliant race. Uh, Brock Pearson. Max Stouffer or Penrite Racing. You know, it was a Yamaha Ducati Yamaha and then a Ducati again with Josh Waters in fourth. Cameron Dunker, again, you know, the current uh, Supersport uh, 2023 champion, another rookie, you know, finishing fifth, uh, finishing only 8.9 seconds away from, you know, Mike Jones, who is an absolute legend of Australian Superbikes. It was fantastic. Crew Halliday, Glenn Allerton. Um, on the BMW, Anthony West, Alpha Sissies, and then our very own Tara Lynch to round out the top 10. And that was race one. Now for race two. So what they do is they do race one in the morning, then there's a nice gap, and then they do race two. So they actually okay. do two races within um, within a day. And we're talking about 16 lap races. So, you know, yeah, on, on Sunday, they, they're doing 32 laps. Yeah, sure. So well. endurance wise, it's very, very important. But again, Mike Jones, but this time by 44 thousands of a second. It was. That's nothing. It was epic. You know, for those of you that have not seen the race, go check it out and jump on SBS on demand. Watch the race. It was absolutely epic. Um, so Mike Jones, uh, Brock Pearson, Josh Waters came in third, and Arthur Sissis. Oh wow! That was uh, he. He once again he had a spectacular ride. Um, seven seconds uh, off the win. 
Um, coming in fourth, I think his best result so far with the stop and seal team. Were they three wide going across the line? Yeah. Yeah, I'm it was looking, crazy. I'm looking at the gaps in the 0.4 yeah, and so, 0.5. Yeah, so four, fifth, and six were covered by... Not even a tenth. Uh, one hundred tenths. No, exactly ninety-nine tenths of a second covered four, fifth, and six. It was um, yeah, it was a great battle at the front. Wow. It was a great battle for fourth place with Cameron Dunker, uh, Crew Halliday, Max Stauffer, Anthony West, uh, John Litra, Litras, uh, and then Tyra, um, Tyra Lynch uh, rounding out the top ten. But overall. Um, Australian Superbikes, uh, phenomenal round. The next stop is the Australian Superbike round five, which would be at Phillip Island. So they're going, they're going back there.